Hello everyone, welcome back to Surya Studios, and today I woke up and I wondered how much money would I get if I sold all of my LEGO Star Wars minifigs, and that is what I'm going to find out today, is exactly how much money are all of my LEGO Star Wars minifigs worth. Throughout this video, I'm going to be looking at the least expensive, least valuable, the cheapest minifigs that I have, all the way up to the most expensive ones. Stick around if you're curious, because I'm also curious, because I don't know. Let's get going! First, let's go through what I think will be the cheapest category, the droids. The B1 Battle Droid came out in 2007 and is in 32 different sets and 6 books. Let's see how many that I have. Alright, and that seems about all the B- oh. I also wanted to see if there was a difference in pricing between the droids with one straight arm and the droids with no straight arms, and honestly, the difference was minimal. Plus, I have plenty of droid arms in my spare parts, so I could really mix and match them however I please, so I practically have both. Now let's look at the pricing of these specialized B1 battle droids. This droid's name is R-O-G-R, -R, aka Roger, it comes in the Star Scavenger set. Then we have the Rocket Battle Droid, the Rocket Battle Droid Commander, the Genosian Commander Droid, and the regular Genosian Droid. And then we have the Droid Commanders in both of the renditions. Then we have the Droid Security Droids in their maroon red bodies, the two renditions of the Droid uh, Captains or the Drivers or Pilots, whatever you want to call them. And then you have the Droids that are technically the Sheik Droids, but also got them in the AAT. Next droids up are B2 Battle Droids, aka Super Battle Droids. LEGO has made two renditions of these, one of them with both of the regular arms and one with a rocket launcher. Next up we have Commando Droids, and these also have two variants, a Captain version and a regular version. Here we have two Magna Guards, which come from the Magna Guard Starfighter set. One of them is missing their cape, however, which was going to cost less. Then I have the Pilot Droid from Dooku Solar Sailor, the current Droideka variant, the other variant of the Droideka with the copper brass pieces from MTT, and then the Sniper Droid from the ATRT set. And here is the entire Separatist army that I own, totaling two. The next up we have Clone Troopers least expensive ones. The new 501st Cloud Troopers. I do have two of the original 501st Troopers Phase 2 versions that came out in 2013, so they're going to be a little bit more expensive than these guys. Here we have my Fiber First Heavy Troopers. I have eight of them. Then I have my Fiber First Clone Specialists, and then the Fiber First Officers. I have Fiber First Jetpack Troopers over here, and then the Fiber First Regs from the first Fiber First Legion Battle Pack that we got. $30, by the way. Then I have two of the 332nd Troopers, two of the OG Fiber First Troopers, one of the Fiber First Pilots, and of course a Phase 2 Captain Rex. And now for the next batch of clones, the OG Phase 1 clone. Well, I guess, okay, sorry. Let, let me, no. Oh. The animated Phase 1 clone trooper is technically not the OG because those were in 2001 and whatnot. So that was my bad. I actually don't have any of those. First up, we have The Shiny, the first OG classic clone trooper from the animated TV show. After this, we have many variants of the same clone, one of them being the clone pilot, which came in many sets such as the V-19 Torrent Starfighter and the Venator Class Destroyer, along with the Gunner, which is another variant made popular by the original Clone Walker Battle Pack. We also have some clones which came in the second Clone Wars Battle Pack, which include this Earth Trooper from Lightning Squad from the Liberty and Ralph arc, then also these Bomb Squad Troopers from the Blue Shuttle Virus. Yeah, 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 ye
from the same battle pack we also have some eth koth troopers which came in it and then we also have a red arf trooper that came in another battle pack next we have the five clone commanders and captains of the phase one line first we have commander fox which came in the helmet spider droid we have commander gree which came in the Geonosian cannon commander cody which came in the gunship and the Geonosian fighter captain rex which came in two sets Commander wolf and his wolf pack trooper which came in the republic frigate set and i love these two troopers in specifically because first off captain rex has a five o'clock shadow on his clone head and commander wolf has an eye scar given to him by asajj ventress that is in fact canon Next up on the list, we have the updated Phase 1 Clone Troopers from Episode 2 specifically. We have a couple variants. We have three of them dependent on the legs, the plain legs, the different design legs, the first design legs, and the most recent design legs from the Clone Trooper Command Station minifigure pack. Next up, we also have two different clone pilots, once again based on the legs. This pilot is a little bit yellowed, as you can clearly see, so he's not going to be worth a lot. I'm probably not going to add him in the count up. Then we have the olive green trooper, the blue trooper, the red decal trooper, the original yellow decal trooper, and then the newer decal yellow troopers from the UCS gunship and the clone trooper command station. And those are my phase one clone troopers from episode two. Next up, we have the Senate Commandos, and there are two types. There's the Senate Commander Captain, and then there's a regular Senate Commando. You could only get these ruling campaign speed on the Venator until the Battle Pack eventually came out. Uh, then they made them popular. Next up are the OG Phase 2 clones with the black heads. First, we have the regular Phase 2. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I just found out that this actual Phase 2 clone trooper with the dotted mouth variant from the Swamp Speeder set from 2010 is worth $6 more than the standard Phase 2 variant of the clone. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Regular Phase 2, then we have the Airborne Trooper, then we have the Star Corps Trooper. I'm pretty sure one of the pauldrons supposed to be Commander Cody doesn't look like him though. We have the two Shock Trooper variants, one with the Black Belt, one with the White Belt. Then we have the Green Trooper from the Wookiee Katamaran set, a Phase 2 pilot, a Recon Trooper, and probably my personal favorite out of the group, the OG Scout Trooper from the clone Turbo Tank. Next we have the Phase 2 variants, but the second rendition of them, and the third rendition of them, and the, the big difference between the second rendition and the third rendition, as you can see, are the visors and how they are printed onto the helmets. We have a regular shiny right here, then we have the first variant of the clone gunner, and then the second variant of the clone gunner in the Phase 2 armor. Then we have the Scout Trooper and the Kashyyyk Trooper from the Kashyyyk Trooper Battle Pack. Then we have the original 212 Troopers from the 212 Battle Pack. And then this guy was supposed to be a 212 Trooper, but as you can see, he is clearly yellow and not orange. Um, he's technically from the Darkness on Umbara arc. Then we have the new 212th variant from the ATTE Walker that just came out. We have the Shock Trooper. We have the Wolfpack Trooper. The Recon Trooper Phase 2 variant. We have Arc Trooper right here. We have the Phase 2 Commander Cody minifigure. We have Captain Jag and a Phase 2 Clone Pilot. We have a Phase 2 Commander Gree. And then the two purple uh, troopers that come with the Mace Windu in the Republic Fighter Tank set. I also wanted to give a little shout out that I do have half of a Sam Trooper Phase 2 Clone Trooper and a custom made Phase 2 Commander Fox. As far as some more named Clone Troopers, I do have the Bad Bat Squad, Hunter, Tech, Wrecker, Echo, and... Uh, Crosshair, cross eye. Goodness gracious, I haven't seen the Bad Batch season 2 yet, so it's been a while since I've even watched Bad Batch, but I have the Bad Batch here. And then we have the Rebels version of Commander Wolf, Captain Gregor, and Captain Rex. And just as something fun to show off, I do have my own custom-made Galactic Marines. I used the, very, uh, the original Snow Troopers from the Imperial era, and I do have the shadow variant of the galactic marines as well that i also custom made so i mean those are probably not worth anything but i just wanted to show off that i did make those custom and then just uh, fit these guys in this category because they are all technically either the og clone or a clone themselves we do have the Chango fett minifigure we have young boba fett over here and then we have the newest boba fett minifigure right there as well and here is all of my clone troopers that I own. And the final price that all of these add up to is... Here 
as my Empire collection. It's not as big as my the Clone Wars collection because I like the Clone Wars better. Here are my Snow Troopers, and there's a wide variety of them, actually. I also have the Snow Trooper Commander, which is different by the insignia on his torso piece and is worth more. We have three different types of Scout Troopers, one of the Hoth version, one of the newer version from the Mandalorian, and then one old style. We also have several AT-AT driver variants as well. And then we have three different types of Storm Trooper variants, a Rebel one, the older one, and then one of the newer dual molded helmets. And then we have two of the drivers from Rogue One. We have a Mortar Trooper, a Shock Storm Trooper, or of course on Guard Storm Trooper. We have uh, three variants of the pilots. We have a First Order Trooper over here, and then we have three different types of Captain Veers. We have the original one, a uh, slightly newer one, and then the UCS one, which actually has the dual molded legs, as you can see. And then we have four different types of Imperial Officers. These two being slightly older, and then these two from the UCS ISD. You can see the arm printed on that one, and the dual molded legs on that one. And of course, we have Admiral Yularen in his Imperial getup. I also have three of these Dark Troopers. I'm also throwing in some Old Republic era Sith Troopers and a Sith Trooper Captain, as you can see on the right with the maroon printing. And then we also have the Old Republic Troopers, four of them, along with Jace Malcolm that came in that Striker Fighter class. Then over here we have two sets of the Mandalorians from the Mandalorian Battle Pack. We have one set of the Mandalorians from the OG Mandalorian Battle Pack. We have five Mandalorians in Beskar armor, including the one up front with two of the Brick Arms Mandalorian guns. We've got two of the regular Mandalorian minifigures. We've got Gar Saxon. We have a Bo-Katan minifigure, not the new one, but the original one. We have a Mandalorian soldier, and then we have two of the Mandalorians from the Forge set. All of these minifigures on this base plate in conclusion are worth. Okay, next up we have a lot of specific Star Wars characters. We'll be looking through all of these from the cheapest ones to the most expensive ones. Here are the minifigs are worth two to three dollars. First up, we have IG-11, came in the Razor Crest, has a printed headpiece. Then we have Unkar's Thug from Ray Speeder. Then we have the Gonk Droid from the Bad Batch Shuttle. Zev Sineska from the Advent Calendar from 2011. Finn from the UCS Millennium Falcon. And Dio from the Resistance y set. Next, we have Rey in her dark tan robe from 2015 to 2019. And moving on, we have the minifigures that are worth $3 to $4 within that price range. The first one we have is the Tusken Raider with the diagonal belt from Trouble and Tatooine, the BB-8 droid from the UCS Millennium Falcon, the Gungan soldier printed head version from the droid transport, the Kletuinian Raider with neck armor, the Gronk droid from the ITS transport, the Kletuinian Raider with helmet, and then the Pords with black wings and tail, and apparently if you have the ones with black wings and tail, they're worth just a couple cents more than the gray ones, so just switch those out if you have those pieces. Next up are the minifigs that are worth from $4 to $5 in that price range. First up, we have Dak Ralter with his dark gray hip from the Snow Speeder. We have an NIL-8 protocol droid from the TIE Fighter set that came out recently. The Jar Jar Brinks with the printed head from the droid transport. Then we have Newt Gunray, the Clone Wars version from the Separatist shuttle set. Zori Bliss from the Resistance y wing set. Tai Shen from the Frico Speeder set. And R7-D4 from Plo Koon's Jedi Starfighter. And finally, we have Baby Yoda, which has been coming out from 2020 to 2022 from the Mandalorian N1 Starfighter Razor Crest and Trouble and Tatooine. Next up, we have Anakano Far from the Separatist Shuttle set, and then we have Rowan from the Star Scavenger set. Didn't really do so well. We then have two different types of Chewbacca. We have the Chewbacca with the Nougat fur, which came with the AT AP Walker and the UCS Millennium Falcon set. And the more expensive Chewbacca version is the purely just brown Chewbacca from 2000 to 2003 from the ATST and the Millennium. Falcon. Next up, we have Shahan Alama from the Cad Bane's speeder set. I really love that gold arm, by the way. And then we have the Rebel Pilots, the two A Wing ones that I have. The lowest priced one is the Nugget Head with the yellow visor. Then the more up priced one is the dark green jumpsuit from the A Wing. 
Next we have Xander from the Star Scavenger set, then after him we have the Wookiee Warrior from the Scout Walker, and we have two Grief Kargas, one from the Imperial Marauder set, which is the least expensive one, but the more expensive one, the Good Grief Karga from the Razor Crest, the very first one that came out in 2020. Capping us off before the $6 mark is the Geonosian Zombie with wings from the Geonosian Cannon set that came out in 2012. I really love this minifigure and I hope that LEGO makes more of these Geonosians because they look excellent. Starting us within the $6 range is Kira from Han Solo's Land Speeder, which came out in 2018. Then we have two R4P17 droids, one from the 2022 Open One Jedi Starfighter, and then the more expensive one is the 2016 to 2017. The difference is the dark blue dome versus the silver dome, and I really can't tell the difference. Minifigs that still remain under the $7 price mark is first the Rebel Pilot Wywin, the blue design from the Rogue One Wywin set, Kara Dune from the ATST Raider set, Logray from the Ewok Attack set, Sabol with movable arms from the Tatooine planet set. And is it just me or does this moon figure sort of look like a fetus? We also have Turk Falso from the Pirate Tank and then BD-72 from the Mandalorians and one Starfighter. Now before we move into the $7 price range, we have four different types of Hoth Rebel Troopers. The first one with white visor goggles came out in the Snowspeeder set in 2004, then the Hoth Rebel with the frown from 2019, but all of these three are in the action battle echo base defense. Same with the Trooper with the open mouth smile and the white uniform with white beard. Then we have a couple minifigs that start off the $7 price range. First off we have Poe Dameron with... <coughs> Thank you. With his uh, white shirt, Varen from the Resistance Y Wind set. Then we have Cordy from the Star Scavenger set. Tokut from the Ewok Attack. And then R3 D5 from the, the Sassy Teen Jedi Starfighter. Next up, we have five different R2-D2s. We have R2-D2 with the light gray head from the Droid Escape set. We have R2-D2 with lavender dots from the Jedi Starfighter and the Tanta V4. We have R2-D2 with a dark pink dot. Go figure if that's pink. From the giant interceptor set, R2D2 from the Clone Wars, Anakin's Y Win, and then R2D2 with dirt stains on front and the back print in, which is pretty nice. Still under $8, we have R4P44 from the ARC-170 Starfighter. Then we have two types of Rebel Fleet Troopers. The five of them I have are from the Rebel Trooper Battle Pack from 2008-2009. Then we have the Rebel Fleet Trooper with the detailed vest printing from the 2019 Tanta V4. I'm so happy I have these minifigs because I can finally recreate my favorite scene. Next up, we have the three Barris Ophis, the cheapest one being from the Geonos and Cannon set, the dark blue cape hood, the second one being from the Jedi and Troopers battle pack, and then the most expensive one from the Swan Speeder from 2010 with the black cape and hood, which I think looks the best. And the final minifigure before we get into the $8 price mark is the Geonos and Warrior with Wings, the non-zombie version. Next up, we have Admiral Akbar, which I have him from the Home One set and the A-Wing set. It's a trap! It's a trap! It's a trap! <laughs> We have the brand new Tanway minifigure from the Obi-Wan Jedi Starfighter set. And now we have a bunch of Luke Skywalkers, let me tell you. The first one being Luke Skywalker printed legs with the visor up slash down from the at, -AT Walker. Luke Skywalker pilot askew front panel from the UCS at, -AT. Then we have the Luke Skywalker with the dark gray hips from the Snow Speeder set. Then we have the Luke Skywalker with the black hood and cape from the Dark Troopers attack set. Double sided head, let me tell you. Luke Skywalker from Cloud City. The best spin duel limited time only set that came out in i think it was 2020 uh luke skywalker bakta tank outfit dark tan here from the hoth medical chamber and finally the most expensive luke skywalker that i have from the dagobot diorama set that came out in 2022 luke skywalker dagobot with tan tank top and i think he looks better in this handstand position Breaking $9, we have the Yodas, the cheapest one being the Yoda Clone Wars white hair version from the ATRG Walker, then the Yoda gray hair version from the Republic Frigate set, the Santa Yoda from the 2011 Advent Calendar, the Yoda olive green that I have from the Dulon Geonosis and the Home and Spider Droid, and then we also have the Yoda belt pattern from the Deco by Training Diorama, once again being the most expensive minifigure of the pack. Then the last two minifigures that we have before we reach $10 is the Astromech Turquoise Edition from the Resistance Y-Wing and then Peli Mato from the Mandalorian and one Starfighter. And here are all my minifigures that I have that are under $10. Here's the total.
Starting us off in the double digits is R3S1 from the Rogue One Y-Wing Starfighter. Then after the droid, we have Baze Malbus from the Rogue One ATST Walker. Then we have the Nikto Guard from the HH87 Starhopper. Then Chief Tarful from the ATAP Walker. Next up, we have all the Obi-Wan Kenobis. The cheapest one being the Nougat Legs from the Bark Speeder with Sidecar, which also came in the Phase 2 Captain Rex. Then the Obi-Wan Clone Wars Animated from the Republic Gunship set. Next, we have the Obi-Wan Brown Robe and Hood Edition from the Jedi Starfighter that came out this year. And then we have the Obi-Wan 20th Anniversary from the minifigure Polybag. Used $8.12, but new $8.50, and I have two of them new sealed. Then we have the Reiko Hardin Disguise one for the HH87 Starhopper set. The Ben Kenobi from the Inquisitor Transport Scythe with the Poncho. Really like that Poncho. Then the Obi Wan Mid Length Two Sled Gunship from 2013, most expensive one. Next on the list, we have Mon Calamari Officer from the Home One, Riva from the Inquisitor Transport Scythe, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren from the Microfighter, Crix Maydeen from the Home One set as well, and also Admiral Radis. From the y wing rogue one set we also have all of my darth mauls to cap us off right before the 13 dollar mark as well the cheapest darth maul being the one with the printed legs with silver armor i have two of them from the dual on mandalore set then we have the darth maul without cape from the sith infiltrator microfighter set then we have darth maul first one 1999 to 2009 sith infiltrator and then we have darth maul crimson dawn from the character encyclopedia book really like this minifigure it looks really good Kenobi! Breaking into $13, we have Kiari Mundi with both variants, the first one from the Clone Wars, and then the second one from the Jedi and Troopers Battle Pack. We then have Quinlan Voss from the Republic Frigate set, Ara Singh from the Bounty Hunter gunship, which came out in 2011, T701, which came from the Old Republic Cruiser, I really like this droid, it's the only type of its kind, and then Satil Shan, which came from the Republic Striker Fighter, really like her minifigure as well. Break in $14, we have the Luminar Unduli, the Clone Wars version from the Separatist Cannon set. Then we have Chirrut Imwe from the Imperial Assault Hover Tank. Then we have the 2-1-B Medical Droid from the Hoth Medical Chamber set. The Grand Inquisitor from the Inquisitor Transport Scythe. The U-5-GG, which is from the TIE Fighter, actually. And then Evan Peel from Sessi Tin's Jedi Starfighter. Next up, we have all of the Han Solos, the cheapest one being from the minifigure dictionary, the Han Solo Celebration version, and the Han Solo holster pattern vest with pockets from the A-Win Starfighter, then we have Han Solo the 20th Anniversary Edition from the Imperial Dropship, and then we have Han Solo white jackets from the Solo movie, which is from the Solo Land Speeder set in 2018, the old version of Han Solo from the Eustace Morin Falcon, then the Han Solo Mud Trooper, which came in a nice poly bag, and then Han Solo holster pattern dark blue jacket from the UCS Millennium Falcon with this really nice double sided printed face. Next up we have is Mon Mothma from the Home 1 set which came out in 2009. Then we have the different Leia's that I have, cheapest one being from Tanta V4, the dress where she also has pants as well to go with it. Then Leia Hop Outfit, white cricket smile from the Hop Medical Chamber. And then the Leia with the Hop Outfit white from the Usus Mullen Falcon. I know they look kind of the same but this one is different because it has the cool double sided face. Next up, we have V. Moradi from the ITS Transport. Then we have Moroff from the y Win Rogue One set. Really cool minifig right there. We have Rata the Hut from the ATT Walker. Little cute, disgusting guy right there. Then we have Poggle the Lesser from the Duel on Geonosis. And this is probably one of my favorite minifigs. Not the most expensive, but definitely one of my favorites. Now we move on to all of my Mace Windu minifigures. Here we go. There's a lot more than I thought. Cheapest one being the Mace Windu with arm printing from the Republic Fighter Tank, actually. Then we have Mace Windu with the dark tan legs from the Grievous Speeder. Mace Windu with white legs from the ATT Walker. Mace Windu with the cape from Palpatine's Arrest. Then Mace Windu with the dark tan legs. This is the one from the UCS gunship. You can tell because he has the nugget dirt printed on the torso. The dirt stains right there. There comes General Grievous, white armor version. <coughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Asaz Ventures. There are three versions of her. I only have one of them, which is the first one, the Clomers version. Got her in the gunship with the unique lightsabers, and I really like the hilts that they come with. 
Then we have the Darth Vader's that I have. I actually have two of the Darth Vader with printed arms. Here we go. I really like the face and how the helmet comes off in two pieces. Then we have the Darth Vader 20th Anniversary Edition, which came with the Scout Walker in 2019. Uh, it has the classic 20 year printed on the back. And that about does it for the $10 to $25 range of Star Wars minifigures. All of these that you see here total to... Next up, we have the more expensive Plo Koon, which you can tell because of his dark tan undershirt on the minifigure. Then we have the two Ala Securas, the cheaper one being for the clone turbo tank in 2010, and the more expensive one being for the Republic fighter tank in 2017. Then we have Stas Ali, which came with the Holman Spider Droid set in 2013. Then we have Lieutenant Beck, which is a rare uh, Mon Calamari from the ITS transport set. Then we have Padme Amidala, Geonosis Arena version from the Public Gunship, and a Lando Calrissian General Insignia version from the Home One set. Next up, we have Keat Fisto with the cape from Palpatine's Arrest. Then right behind him is Sassy Tune with the cape. Also from Palpatine's Arrest, by the way, that came out in 2012. Next up, we have the three Ahsoka minifigures. I don't have the fourth one. Unfortunately, the fourth one that I don't have is the most expensive one. But the cheapest one being the Ahsoka Town Mandalorian Edition from the Duel of Mandalorian AAT set. Then we have Ahsoka Town, the Padawan version from the Y-Wind and the Clone Turbo Tank, etc. Then we have Ahsoka Tano, backlist vest version from the Coruscant Police Gunship, second most expensive. Next up, we have Eeth Koth from the Republic Frigate. Then I have two of the three Cad Banes. The first one, the cheapest one being for the HH87 Starhopper set, the Regis Brown. And then the Cad Bane, the OG one from the clone Turbo Tank with the Breathalyzer. Then we have Pong Krell from the Z95 Headhunter set with his classic forearms. He can just crawl away because he is a loser. Now let's go through all of my Anakin Skywalkers. The cheapest one being the Parker one from the Freako Speeder, which I thought this would be worth more, honestly, but I guess not. The next one being the Anakin Skywalker Clone Wars variant, such as from the Y1 Starfighter, Clone Terror Tank, ATT Walker, etc. We have the Anakin Skywalker from the Jedi Starfighter set, and then the Anakin Skywalker from the Jedi Interceptor set. Then we have Anakin Skywalker Clone Wars Virgin Chorus on Police Gunship, but he's different because he has brown legs and dark black pants printing on them. Oh, not again. Then we have Anakin Skywalker from the Republic Gunship, which I keep on saying it looks more like Syndra Lig than Anakin Skywalker. Then we have Anakin Skywalker, the Sith face cape version from Palpatine's Arrest, but to me, it kind of just looks like he just needs some coffee, honestly. Next up, we have Shakti from the Jedi Shuttle set. She's a little worn out, so I'm going to downprice her. And then we have Hondo Naka, probably one of my favorite stars, minifigs on the Pirate Tank from 2009. Then we have Captain Antilles from the Tantive 4 set from 2019. I love that double-sided face. And then we have the Sith Warrior from the Old Republic Cruiser set from 2013. Really cool minifig right there. Then we have Coleman Trevor from the ATT set from 2013 as well, aka Dinosaur Head Guy. And here are all of my minifigs from the $25 range to the $50 range. Right here, this is how much they cost in total. Next up, I have two Palpatines, the cheaper one being from the Venator, the Clone Wars version, but the more expensive one being from Palpatine's Arrest. 
This guy's got a cool double face too. Unlimited power. <laughs> then we have the Jedi Counselor from the Old Republic Cruiser in 2013. Count Dooku with white hair from the Duel on Geonosis. I really love that like actual fully chrome lightsaber hilt. Then we have the fifth brother. The cheaper ones from the Inquisitor Transport Scythe. But the way more expensive one is from the Captain Rex's ATT Walker. The Rebels version. Next, we have Bail Organa from the Tanta V4. Honestly, I just love this guy's olive color scheme. He looks good in olive. Then we have Asian Kolar, also from Palpatine's Arrest. And that's the final minifigure before we wrap up the under 100 priced minifigures. Here are all the minifigures from $50 to $100. And the total price is right up here. Remaining minifigs that we have that are over $100 is this Jedi Knight from the Old Republic Cruiser. Then we have Darth Malchus from the Sith Fury Class Interceptor. This is a well sought after for minifigure, let me tell you. Then we have the C-3PO's, the group. This is why they are the most expensive. Not this one. This is the C-3PO colorful wires pattern from the Droid Escape. Next are the C-3PO colorful wires printed leg version from the UCS Millen Falcon and Tantive V4. Uh, but here's the real reason. <laughs> the C-3PO chrome gold star wars 30th anniversary edition one of 10,000 poly bags that's correct everyone i have one of these and not only do i have one it's not used it's new it's completely sealed still in the bag as you can see i keep it in this nice shadow box that my dad made for me uh if you actually want to see the journey of how i got this set you can actually watch that that's actually one of my very first ever lego videos i think it's actually my first ever lego hall adventure vlog video which uh, i think it's like almost an hour long i did not know how to really edit well back then uh, but you can go watch that journey. I travel all the way down to New Jersey. I got an insane price for this. I only paid $450. I was like, I'm risking it. I know it's COVID 2020, but I was like, I need to do this because this is such a good deal. Don't know if I'm going to see this again. The most recent sale of this new uh, Chrome Gold C3PO in a poly bag sealed that Bricklink has on record is in May of 2023 of this year uh, for $1,662.10. Now, however, the average price on sale right now of this new sealed recorded on Bricklink is $3,435.90. So as you can see, paying four fifty dollars back then in 2020 really has paid off you can see that you can see there's a hole in the bag so you can actually look into it and see the minifigure and it's so shiny you can actually see my reflection that is insane uh there is the head of the c3po looks <laughs> looks really great right there ah he just ah, it looks so good i mean because it's chrome gold the only the, there's only one more expensive C-3PO Lego minifigure, and they and Lego only made five of them. There's actually one for sale on eBay right now, which is around five hundred thousand dollars, I think. But it's a, I think it's like a solid fourteen karat gold C-3PO, and there's like a certificate of authentication, all that stuff. But this is the next. This is the second best, second most expensive uh, C-3PO Lego that has Lego has ever made, essentially. So. There we are. That's it. That is my most expensive Star Wars minifigure, everyone. That is from the bottom to the top. And I'm so happy that you came along with me on this journey. I was very excited. I can't wait to see what the summation of all these prices are. I will show you that in just a second. And the grand total of my 623 minifigs in all is 10316 cents. Well, I guess that's, I should probably say $10,300.16. That's insane. Just this right here is my, is the accumulation of what I still need to pay off in my college loans. <laughs> if I sold all this, I could pay it off. That's insane, everyone. So I don't know. I hope you found out some, just some cool things about certain minifigs. I certainly found out, like, I didn't know there were two variants of Commander Grey Phase 2. Uh, I didn't know that Jango Fett from the Jedi Starfighter and with Hyperdrive was so expensive. Like, oh my goodness, $195. So the uh, five minifigs here are the only five I have that are above 
a hundred dollars and then of course prize possession most expensive one right here thank you everyone for watching please like comment and subscribe this video took me seven days to make so <laughs> sorry it's been a drought of videos but i've been literally working on this one video for seven days trying to make it as best as i can so i hope the entire video is worth watching uh yeah join the discord uh click the bell icon so you can know if i want to post new content and as always <sighs> so as studios everyone have a great day see you next time peace out